Aloha. This is Think Tech Hawaii. And this show you're watching is Politics for the People. I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton. Our topic today is coming soon, possibly dystopian America. We are beginning with a brief video on our title topic. Thank you. Let's get talk started with our panel of guests. They include Jay Fidel, Tim Apicella, and Winston Welch. Uh, let's uh, go to Jay first and say to him, do American politics justify the points made in the video? Or is it hyperbole, Jay? What do you think? I think if you think about it, it's not hyperbole. You know, connect the dots every day to see little flashes of optimistic light. And I'm sure that we can find some of those. But the long haul on this, uh, not to use the COVID term, uh, the long look at it is that we're going down. Our democracy is going down. Our health care is going down. Our economy is going down. We may have a bubble going on in the stock market, but it's only a bubble. Um, and our, you know, the divisiveness in our country is a, it's a, it's a permanent thing already. It's going to go, you know, I always like to say that, um, you know, that we have a political virus too, and uh, the political virus is, uh, is going to turn endemic. So at the end of, um, you know, the, the pandemic, the political pandemic, which we're in right now, we'll have an endemic political problem, and, and that will be, um, you know, a, a dystopia. I mean, if the, the, the first thing that happens is, uh, is that we have um, a change in government to the GOP, and we can imagine what that's going to be like, and, and then there's going to be pushback on that, and uh, that'll be in the street, um, and, uh, and then we'll wind up with a sort of an endemic condition, and the endemic condition will be a change in our quality of life, and really the, the great inquiry, if you make assumption on all those things, the great inquiry is, uh, what will that be like? Will you be able to get a dentist and a doctor? Will there be food on the shelves? Uh, will the tax department treat you fairly? Um, will you know the regular services provided by government be available? Will the re regular protections provided by government be available? Um, what will our lives be like? It's out of a science fiction movie, I know, but we're in a, tra a transformation right now. I'm going to say transition. It's not a transition. It's a transformation. We've enjoyed a wonderful time in, under the cover of our democracy all our lives, but there's no reason to make the grand assumption that it is so resilient that it will continue with all of these um, factors that are undermining it right now. 
And the big question to me, and I think it's, a, it's more than an intellectual exercise, is what will that be like? It's coming soon. Thank you. That is chilling. Um, Tim, um, as Jay says, we are, we're in a political virus as well. Um, do you think that uh, with the likelihood of a change in government from the Democrats to Republican control, as, as is predicted on the media, um, and it is only a prediction, um, do you think that um, this scenario is likely given that predicted change in government? Is there okay, much- well, we're, we're, The question is centered around a prediction. And I'm reminded of the, the old uh, Charles Dickens play, um, A Christmas Carol. And in that, in that play, in that book, and then the movies, uh, at the very end, uh, Scrooge is being shown his future and, and the demise of his life. And, and he asks the spirit, are the things that you show me things that will be or things that may be? And I hate to say it, but we've already predicted the demise of the loss of the House from the Democrats to the Republicans. And, and with that goes the Senate. And I'm not sure I'm 100% behind that. Uh, the gerrymandering uh, process has worked out far better for the Democrats than initially thought. And, you know, there is something called, you know, if you think, therefore you are. And I think we have to not necessarily give up on the fact that the House could be retained. And I think they do it under the guise of democracy should triumph, not uh, GOP uh, steal, steal the election, steal the vote. And uh, the GOP platform, which there is no platform, the Democrats will have a platform. They'll have, a go they'll have ideals and policies that independent voters and Democrats and those dissatisfied Republicans can get their arms around. So I, yeah, I know we're, the show's about dystopian future, but um, it ain't over until it's over. Well, all right, a little more optimistic um, th there, Tim, thank you. Um, Winston, what do you think Republicans would say after viewing this video? Well, they're probably going to um, not appreciate it because they're specifically called out in the video. Um, but if you could say that, uh, that, that given just the state of our politics, this is a possible um, likely scenario. Um, and I appreciate, I appreciate that. I don't think it's a chicken little scenario either. I think it's, it's, a, it's a real possibility that we could be facing here. However, I'm going to err uh, on the side of, of cautious optimism. I, like, like Tim said, is, it is a Scrooge thing. It is a possible scenario. And what this video um, shows us is indeed what is, is portending to be a, you know, a sort of a grim state coming down. And, and how would that um, you know, come about and, and, and how does it bleed through? But Jay's right. Are you going to be treated by the tax authorities fairly? Are the is our police going to be following you because they're under directives because you you appear on think tech and and they're looking to pull you over and throw you into the the reeducation camp in Utah that the uh, whatever it is these are all things and I love the dystopian movies as much as anybody else I think they provide us actually a roadmap of where we don't need to go um, and how things fall apart um, that said what what we really need to do now is take that video and every single slide in it and come up with the antidote. What is the antidote to this, that, or the other? And I think the Republicans or the Democrats both, let's just take out their names and say, uh, no one has a vested interest in this happening. And it, you, there has been a stranglehold on the, on the what, you know, use, what we used to call Republicans. That may be lessening. Let's see what happens. I thought it was, uh, it's just interesting to see um, you know, Joe Biden talking about the Senate and it really uh, you know, sort of sad terms that it's a shell of what it used to be. Um, it's not what you want to hear coming from the mouth of the president. And then a, a, an hour before he was supposed to go before uh, the Senate or, or to give a talk about his, uh, you know, uh, democratic reforms uh, today, then Chris, uh, Christian Sistema comes out and says, I won't support any, uh, you know, filibuster um, uh reduction and she could have waited until after his speech you know at, at a minimum we all know where she stood on this but his message and I, I think there's 
what she and and let's just assume that uh, that Joe Manchin are on the side of um, of right and that they're worried about what a future minority um, status party might mean for the Democrats. However, that said, I I I wonder if the tables were reversed here if every advantage wouldn't be taken and the and the uh, filibuster broken if it could be let's not forget that uh, Mitch McConnell pushed through would not allow uh, Barack Obama's uh, Supreme Court justice to be nominated in the last year of his uh, term but had no problem pushing through uh, you know one in the last three months of, of Donald Trump's uh, uh, presidency. Good point, Winston. Well, let's take your notion of an antidote for, for all of the points made in, in the film, um, in the video, and uh, go to Tim and say, what, what's an example of an antidote for free press rooted out? Oh, what? my favorite topic. <laughs> Jay and I have talked about this a hundred times. Um, I want to see government regula regulation to um, differentiate the difference between real news versus commentary and editorial. I want to see the editorial desk, you know, 20 feet away from uh, the news reporting. And I think if that occurs, people start watching the news again and start accepting the facts of the news rather than being filtered through a Tucker Carlson or a Sean Hannity type personality. And they can't distinguish between fact and opinion and the filtering of, of, the, of the news. And um, we, if we start doing that, um, that's a good step forward to, to kind of uh, reduce the temperature of our polarization and um, our, our you know, our disagreements with one another. Uh, Tim, is, is the Walter Cronkite scenario of the past the sort of thing you're- Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I don't think there's anything that can prevent it from being enforced. I, you know, we talked about uh, infringements on the First Amendment, but um, it's just, again, when, when, when opinion can now shape facts, and those facts are literally killing thousands of Americans uh, by misinformation of COVID, or um, facts that create uh, insurrection and, and sedition, then the media is being used as a tool of propaganda and is not for the good of the public. And therefore, the government should be able to come in and say, no, we're going to put a firewall between news and commentary. You can comment all you want. You can offer opinions all you want. You're just not going to do it in the same five sentences as a news story fact. OK, yeah, could border the screen for that. OK, well, Jay, um, do you think um, the, sh the, the video does a, a good job of differentiating the democratic and the autocratic kinds of government is my is basically the first question. And if you do, do you think that most Americans know the difference? No, no. I, I think we have um, you know uh, three hundred and some odd million people who don't know the difference. They didn't learn it in school and not learning it now. Um, you know, there was a very interesting piece on CNN last week. Um, uh, where uh, they they paralleled uh, clips from what Trump was doing and the, the GOP is doing now with what Adolf Hitler was doing. And it was very chilling. You know, we've all heard that comparison made before. But in this case, uh, they show you step by step about how we're proceeding down the same road he he was proceeding. You know, every every country, even countries that have great democratic experiments going on, is subject to the same kind of human frailty. And we are finding that out. There's nothing that, there's nothing that guarantees us the continuation of our democracy. You know, Germany was a democracy at the end of World War I. And um, Hindenburg was his name and he was well liked, um, but Hitler found ways to, um, to replace him. And at the end of the day, the democracy went snuff in like a week when Hitler was made the chancellor. Um, and this could happen here too. And, and it's really a, kind of a fertile ground for that with uh, you know, half the country being on Trump's side and, and not, not having a clue about where that could lead. So I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nourishing experience to look down the Charles Dickens road and see what the ghost of Christmas future is. Because I don't think people realize that. 
and they don't realize what autocracy can bring for them. They don't know, they don't really study what happened in other countries, not just Germany, where autocracy took over. And all of a sudden, you know, the assumptions you've made about the quality of your life and the quality of your future, um, the, and the quality of your thought, if you will, um, you know, is, is taken away from you. And, and I think that there's a fair chance that at least some of that is going to happen. And it's, maybe it's a question of degree, but the great likelihood is we're going to find our world has been transformed and things we took for granted won't be available to us anymore. Uh, and this is going to happen, you know, in connection with the 2022 election, if not sooner, uh, make that the 2020, yeah, the 2022 election this, this year. We're right on the precipice of this whole thing we're talking about. This is a very relevant discussion because it is happening. And even if you don't agree with me about some of my assumptions, if you want to be optimistic about some of those things, the fact is we're being transformed. And let me add that it's not to a better place. I guarantee it's not to a better place. Um, thank you. Winston, do you think that the video is, is strong enough on what shows America as exceptional, or um, is it too lightly inferred? I mean, what 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 is the inference out of this video? Is it uh, how strong is it for what America could lose? Well, I think it, it loses our sense of uh, what it what this country means. It points out it points out what we yeah what we can lose our very uh, identity and our values. And so for that, it's, it's uh, instructional, it's, it's useful. Um, but again, I wanna see the emphasis on, okay, so, so what? Now, what do we do about it? Now, it doesn't matter which direction you turn in, whether it's a uh, you know, moral, political, philosophical, educational, um, uh, cultural, we have a lot of work to do to shore up our our uh, our values our, and our shared values and understand that we do really share most of our values when you asked earlier about uh you know what would uh, what would be the advantage for the republicans even though mitch mcconnell has uh you know certainly advanced uh the republican um the old republican agenda let's say and made an alliance uh with with donald trump to advance his aims that that almost went very south and you saw kevin mccarthy and you saw uh, mitch mcconnell come out on july 6th and, and july 7th saying this fellow was squarely the problem then you saw two or three weeks later kevin mccarthy going down to uh to uh, kiss the ring of the pope again in florida uh, the, uh, or Emperor Trump. And then you had uh, Mitch McConnell, though, he's on sort of the official enemies list, I guess, but he has no vested interest in seeing America come off the rails either. He's, he doesn't. He's, he's been in the Senate probably as long as, uh, as uh, President Biden was, or, or almost as long. He knows how to play the game. He's very good at it and, and pulling the strings, but Let's face it. Nobody has an interest in seeing the type of scenarios like like uh, Jay suggests because they know that that could be wielded just as easily against them. Well, they don't want to see economic uh, collapse or stores without uh, things or people being um, uh, ruffianed up at, at protests or, or, or all of all of the scenarios that are envisioned in that. No one has a vested interest in that, and so my hope is that they just like with the uh, you know larger scenarios of, of NATO and Russia meeting, that they will come to some sort of understanding that, look, folks, let's pull back from this. This is stupid. We've done our posturing. It got hardened. Um, you know, it, it's time to pull back. It's time to just regroup and say, we're not going to agree on these things, but we can agree on most of these other things. Interesting. All right. Thank you. I, I want to snap back to Jay, uh, for this um, is kind of like a follow up on the uh, pre his previous answer, which is um, given some of what Winston said, Ken, do you think that actually, Jay, the senators and the rep and the representatives that they can differentiate between autocracy and democracy? But these are uh, our leaders and highly educated. So now moving that same question I asked you before in, into the sphere of the leadership, what do you think? Do they have a good grasp of this? What are they thinking? 
You know, we, we've grown up thinking that if you walk through the hallowed halls of Congress, especially the Senate, you will find them well-educated, you'll find them committed to the, you know, a good future for the country. That's just not true. They won elections. And sometimes they use trickery to win those elections. And they made, you know, rhetorical statements and, and engaged in the demagoguery to get there. They're not PhDs. They're not worldly. I'd take any one of you for the Senate before I would take most of them. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so I don't, I don't think they understand it. I don't, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, we can be aspirational about how, you know, <clears throat> that ultimately humanity will prevail and that wisdom will prevail and that the, and the, the essential um, values of the country, if they're, if they're identifiable anymore, will prevail. But, but I think that, that you have to admit that they haven't prevailed yet. And as a matter of fact, it's getting worse. Uh, Joe Biden is becoming impotent. Uh, sometimes he doesn't understand the mistakes he makes. Uh, he's got a number of high officials now that are refusing to cooperate with the select committee. Uh, they're still completely Trumpers. We've got the base, the party, we've got all those Republican states, and they're waiting. It's kind of the calm before the storm. They're waiting for uh, November, and they have got a whole list of strategies lined up. I don't know how you could be optimistic and think that, you know, that, that the right and the good will prevail. We are, if we connect the dots, just look at the trajectory, which is in the, the title of this show, look at the trajectory, or maybe not, but is it is the trajectory toward Republican control of Congress. Um, it is the trajectory toward Republican control of the White House, and it is the trajectory toward confirmed control of the Supreme Court. Uh, and they have no agenda, but if you have to sh shake it and bake it and find out what they would do if they are in power, that's easy. They would aggrandize themselves. They would cater to the 1%. They would dump on the, the poor and disadvantaged and the immigrants. They would, they would dump on most of us. Uh, and they would take our civil liberties away. I mean, <clears throat> it's, it's clear to me that even if my predictions, which I agree are dire, uh, don't come true, some of them will, part of them will. And you know, the notion of endemic is kind of a social compromise where, okay, it's not going to be, you know, like, like, like Xi Jinping in, in, in Xinjiang um, or Hitler in Germany um, or any of those great dictators, but it's going to be pressure from the right, from autocracy, doing away with the institutions that we have developed over the last 200 years, doing away uh, with the Bill of Rights and representative government. Um, modifying those things. So maybe it, it, it seems that way, but it isn't really that way. Kind of a Putin-esque way of running government. Yeah, we have elections. Sure, we have elections, but they don't mean anything. And everybody's intimidated. And you want to run against him, you want to get up in jail. That sort of thing. So that's, that's the endemic approach to what happens when democracy is undermined. It doesn't have to be completely the seventh circle but it's likely to be a lot less appealing than what we had. Thank you. Well, Tim, does it uh, mean that this video is lacking in, it, in the message it's sending? Is it, is it a phone? Well, I think the message is, is a good message, and that is wake up. You know, uh, if, if you're complacent and, or you're apathetic because you think, um, you know, there's always crises in America, and this is just one of many, and nothing's going to disrupt our democratic way of, of governance and, and voting. Uh, I think it's a great video to say, not so fast. Think twice, think three times. And I think it's a call to, uh, it's an alarm. It's, let's get involved. Uh, what can you do on an individual basis to... Um, let people know that you're concerned about our, our way of, of democracy and our way of the rule of law and our way of how we elect our officials. Um, so from that standpoint, I really do appreciate it. Um, it is dystopian, uh, but uh, I think maybe that's appropriate to, to, to have that tone right now. 
And I think uh, it's on the news quite a bit, isn't it? That uh, democracy is under attack. And I think people are listening. And I, you know, I, I think of the Georgia election, uh, the two Senate seats that were clearly marked GOP in, in 2020. And, and I think that the issues of what could be uh, with a, a, another second term of Donald Trump uh, um, got people up and out of their chairs and engaged. And I don't think it's any different now in 2022 that the stakes are high and people have to say, what is at stake? And, and yeah, normally I don't like to vote or I don't wanna wait in line three hours, uh, but by gosh, it'll be worth it and I'll do it. And I'll bring my own water since it's illegal for me to be given water. Can I jump in for a minute, Stephanie? <clears throat> you know, we, we know there's a problem. And we know that the, um, the, the larger solution is for people uh, to take action, uh, not to be complacent. We know that. Um, and, and, and we tell people that, and the media in general tells people that, all those commentators, they tell people that. <clears throat> However, what can we do? Um, you know, you can stamp your feet. Uh, let's see, you can go out in the street and protest. That may or may not have any effect on anything. You can vote, but you're not sure if the voting system is going to work next time. Um, see, I think I ran out of options. Oh, you can go to the media, but I'm not sure the media really does the job. I'm not sure that the media is, uh, is really bellying up to the problem. They talk about it, but it's just talk. And so it's, there's not a lot of options for us, meaning us guys here and the public in general, to take the action people suggest to avoid complacency. Yeah, very good. Flawed options, Jay. Uh, uh, Winston, I had one other question I wanted to ask about the video. What, what, how broad do you think the audience is for this video? That's at the first level, and the second level is what, who will watch it, but how, how broad, broadly should the audience be for this well, video? I'd like to think that all of our compatriots watch ThinkTech um, on a daily basis, uh, whether or not that's actually true <laughs> remains to be seen by statistics that will uh, bear out on how many people click on the video um if we took if we took out the, the the gop part in that video would it still remain as relevant for people and i think what you'd see on the other side is the same as people also very fired up saying where did my nation go it's being stolen um, we need to have these laws so that we can protect ourselves from the Democrats who are trying to overturn our elections. You would find a parallel universe on the other side of the, 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 the coin, right? So uh, it may be relevant for both and for both people to say, okay, how do we bridge this gap that has not been insurmountable to bridge before? You know, honestly, when Jay's talking uh, and what he's saying, there's the part of me that that uh, agrees completely, that wants to just throw up my hands and say, yeah, it, 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 he's right. Um, uh, let's just give up or, or let's not give up. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that this situation exists. It's just going to get worse. And while that may be true, um, I, I like to, you know, anyone who watches the show knows that I like to be optimistic, that I like to, you know, get up on the right side of the bed. And if I get up on the wrong side of the bed, I want to go back to bed and get up again. <laughs> that said, it may not be enough to change the course of things. Um, but at the end of the day, I would like to think that each of us is that butterfly that flaps his or her or their wings and creates that um, that change that, that results in the, the storm coming, you know, a thousand miles away. So what can we do? Can we stomp our feet? Can we write to the media, like Jay was saying? Yeah. But maybe it's the simple conversations we have and maybe like the endemic or the pandemic, if we share that with three people and they share it with three people and we're able to bridge these concerns and we're able to share our concerns mutually and actually listen to each other and try and break past the, the nonsense and chaos and noise out there, maybe our little butterfly flapping wings will have the effect of bringing us back together to a path of sanity and kindness and, uh, and, and real American values that we can all share. Yeah, nice image to end on because we're out of time. Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> so brief? Yeah, very brief. You know, 
stomp our feet, protest, write to the media, have conversations. Um, you know, it comes down to specifics. Be innovative. I could have a conversation with my kids saying, if you vote for Donald Trump in 2024, you're not getting a penny of my inheritance, period. I will change two votes. <laughs> so it's not generalities that we need to focus on, it's specifics. And power. <laughs> we all have power. And it's all right, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> I'll thank everybody. We're out of time. And uh, um, I'm Stephanie Stahl Dalton, uh, your host for this Politics for the People once a week talk show. And uh, Jay Fidel, Tim Apicella, Winston Welch have uh, been our guests today, today and on all days. We'll see you next week. Thank you and aloha.